Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here and welcome to another episode of Challenge Jimmy. This is where you, the subscriber, can send me your images and I'll try and give you advice on how to process them. Today I'm going to show you some great techniques that will not only allow you to blend interior shots perfectly, these techniques can be used in any other scene in exposure blending. So we'll go from this base exposure, which is a little bit dark, but has some overexposed highlights, to this final image in just a few steps. Thank you very much to Hamish Niven for sending in these great images. He's captured a very beautiful scene, and I'm sure we'd all like to stay in somewhere like this. And he's done it very well in the sense that he's covered all of the shadows and highlights in the three exposures. So for example, we have a darker exposure here, which covers the highlights in the sky. We've got a base exposure here, which contains almost all of the information we need. And then we've got a brighter exposure to bring back some of the shadows. Now this particular tutorial is more about preparing for exposure blending than the actual exposure blending itself. And I'm going to show you these techniques across two different images. Now I teach these techniques in the Mastering Raya Pro course. And if you use Raya Pro and you really want to push your exposure blending skills to the highest possible level, I strongly recommend that you purchase that course. You can see the link for it in the description of this video below. Now with these three exposures, I'm just going to select them all and I'm going to hold down shift and you can see down here it changes from open images to open objects and I'm going to press that. Now we have our three exposures in Photoshop open like this. I'm going to stack them by using the stack button in Raya Pro. Now I'm going to show you how to blend these exposures with Raya Pro and without Raya Pro. So keep watching the video if you don't use Raya Pro yet. Now I'm going to make this full screen and you can see we have our darker exposure on top, our base exposure in the middle and our brighter exposure at the bottom. And I'm going to bring that brighter exposure at the top, make it invisible and only make the base exposure visible. Now we want to take the sky from this darker exposure and put it into this base exposure. The problem here is that the darker exposure is simply too dark. If we take the sky from this darker exposure and say for example this area here and this area here, it's going to be too dark for the image, it won't look natural. And in the end, it will probably flatten the contrast in our scene, which I'm sure most of you have experienced when exposure blending. But there's an easy way to fix that. So let me demonstrate this first. I'm just going to click on the darker exposure and I'm going to click auto blend dark. Now I'm going to go straight to something like a four mask here because we need something very contrasting that's only targeting the highlights. And actually I'm going to choose a five. So just to show you what the mask looks like, you can click on the mask and we're targeting mainly the highlights here that are overexposed. And it looks relatively natural. So I'm going to press select. So there we go. We've blended those two exposures. But if we zoom in, we've completely flattened the contrast in the boardwalk there. And if we go towards the tree, the tree itself doesn't look particularly natural. There's a tree before and there's after. And the branches look kind of strange and ghostly. Now an easy way to fix that is just to bring the opacity down so that the blend is a little more natural. And on this scene that might actually work. But on a lot of scenes, it doesn't work. So I'm going to show you an alternative way to blend these exposures that will work with pretty much any scene. So I'm going to bring the opacity of that layer back. Now, the reason why we open these images as smart objects is so that if we double click on the thumbnail like this, we bring up Adobe Camera Raw again. Now with Adobe Camera Raw, I'm going to do something that doesn't seem very logical. I'm going to bring the shadows all the way up. I'm going to bring the exposure up and then I'm going to bring the highlights down. And bring the exposure up a bit more. And now obviously when we zoom in, that looks terrible. There's a huge amount of color noise and it just doesn't look very good. But in the blending process, we're not using any of these darker areas where we have noise and any other form of degradation. We're just going to be using the brighter parts of the image. And since the darker exposure has that information in it already, it won't incur any extra noise. So if you look at the sky, it's still nice and clean. But what I'm doing here is I'm matching to some degree the brightness values of the base exposure. And by doing that, when we place our two exposures on top of each other, they fit more like a jigsaw, more naturally together. Now I'm actually going to bring the highlights up a little bit more 
Because in reality, when we look at this scene, we want the sky to be brighter. We don't want the sky to be darker than other parts of the image. It has to seem natural to our mind when we look at it. And going for a really dark sky simply won't look natural. So if I press OK, watch how the image changes. And that quickly, we now have a much more natural blend. So that's the image beforehand and that's after. So we've recovered the sky and we've kept a lot of that nice contrast and detail. Just to show you, I'm going to zoom in to the boardwalk again and there's the before and after. And now if we zoom in to the tree here, before the leaves and branches look kind of ghostly, but now they look completely natural. And if we zoom in to say this corner here, you can see we don't have any crazy edging like we often do when we blend exposures. It all looks very natural. And if we zoom up here, you'll see we don't have any of that noise that we had in Adobe Camera Raw because we're not using that area from the darker exposure. So by simply matching the luminosity values of these two exposures, the darker exposure and the base exposure, we've been able to create a very natural blend. Now what about the brighter exposure? Well, the brighter exposure is extremely bright and obviously too bright, but I'm going to make the darker exposure invisible and I'm going to choose Auto Blend Bright. And it's actually done a really good job of blending the exposures here if I just use the first mask. That's Auto Blend Bright 1. So I'm just going to select that. And to blend the exposures more naturally, again, I'm going to make the darker exposure visible here, we can bring down the opacity of the brighter layer. And that works fine in this particular image. Or we can double click on the thumbnail and we can bring down the brighter exposure. And since we're bringing the exposure down and not up, this won't create any image degradation. We won't have extra noise or chromatic aberration. The other thing I often like to do is to bring the highlights down quite a lot, because often we'll find like areas in this tree, for example, will darken nicely and that will match the brightness level of the exposures that we've already blended. So if we go for a darker exposure and some darker highlights and press OK, now we have again a much more natural scene. So this is what the image looked like before. It's kind of flat in contrast, just like when we blended the darker exposure. And this is after. And here's the before and after all of the blending. And again, if we just zoom into this tree, here is the before and after. Now, usually when I blend exposures like this, it only takes a few seconds because I know what I'm doing. I'm not usually explaining it like this. And actually, it's far quicker to blend exposures in Photoshop like this than it is in a lot of HDR software. So how do we do this in Photoshop without Raya Pro? So all we've done is actually created some contrasting masks in Photoshop. That's it. So I'm just going to delete these masks. And I don't have to go back into Adobe Camera Raw and change the luminosity values. We can leave the exposures like this. I'm going to create a mask on the darker exposure, go to image, apply image, and anyone who's watched my tutorials will know this from previous videos. Just press OK, image, apply image, press OK. And we're going to have to do this a few times to create a more contrasting mask. Or we can make this darker exposure visible, choose the actual mask itself. Now this is actually pretty good and press Command and L on a Mac or Control and L on a PC and we can actually create a more contrasting mask with the levels adjustment layer instead. But this has actually done a pretty decent job for us, as we can see. And with the brighter exposure, instead, we're going to make the darker exposure invisible again, create a mask on the brighter exposure, go to image, apply image. This time we're going to choose invert. And we see we've created an inverted mask. Press OK. And we only have to do that once on the brighter exposure for it to blend nicely. So if you're happy with the blend, then we can just go to adjustments and let's say we open up a levels layer and we can bring up the highlights along the shadows and the midtones just to brighten up the scene a little bit more. So this is the image we started with, with overexposed highlights and a darker interior. And this is the final image. Now let me show you this as an example on a more difficult scene. Now here is my old apartment in South Korea. We'd only just moved in, so we didn't have much furniture at that time. And I've done exactly the same thing. I've created a contrasting mask, which targets only the highlights. And if I disable the mask, you can see the darker exposure. There's the brighter exposure. Now, 
The blending obviously isn't very natural, it doesn't look good, but if we reduce the opacity of this layer, what happens is when we start to make it look more natural in the interior side of the image, the exterior becomes less visible and overexposed. So just as before, I can click on the darker exposure and I can go crazy with this and really bring up brightness values and bring down the highlights just so it's quite natural and press OK. And just like that, we've created a more natural blend. So here's before and after. And that's it. So just by preparing your images in Adobe Camera Raw, you can blend pretty much any scene, interior, cityscape, landscape, or seascapes. And remember, if you want to take your exposure blending skills to a whole new level, please look out for my Mastering Raya Pro course. Obviously, you need Raya Pro too, but you can get them together at a discounted price. And in the next week or so, I've got a really cool upgrade coming up for most Raya Pro users. At the minute, it's a new piece of software that only works for CC users, but I'm hoping to get a CC version working soon if we can find a skilled enough developer. But until then, thank you very much for your time and I'll see you next time.